Here by silence, I mean fear or hesitation. So it is quite enthusing to note that around 64 percentage of the students were enthusiastic and inquisitive to learn about the process. And at the same time, it is unbelievable to note that only 3 percent were nervous during the interaction or during the practice. So, here I would say that project think approach is a crucial factor to undo silence in the classroom. Thus, we can assert that it is not the amount of practice, rather the quality practice that is important to own the communication skills of the students. These are the expressions of inclusion that I see at the university, the stakeholder participation, the community participation, which we put it as participatory learning. Students make a lot of stakeholder interactions, constant interaction with the uh, senior management, with the deans, with the faculty members, with the external stakeholders, make them feel that they overcome the nervousness. And if you look at this data, around 75% of students feel that projecting approach helped them to come out of the cocoon of nervousness. The term project is deep rooted in the language tasks evolving from the project itself. This particular method is very authentic. It makes use of language which has connection or which has relevance to the real life situations. Now I'll show you a small video clip which says that knowledge is beyond the boundaries, which says that it is the projecting approach is a natural extension of fully integrated language and content learning. Here also comes the concept of constructivism, engaged learning. What the labor do? Uh, they, here we can see the negligence of the labor. See, uh, what they have uh, given the stirrup, they have provided bar bending uh, at 90 degree only. But according to the IS code, it should be provided at uh, 135 degree, according to 1893 IS, uh, 80 IS code. So, this is the negligence of uh, uh, labor. What happens when after some time, this bending will open and the crack will occur. So, this is the main reason where the, at the joints the crack occurs. Now look at the excitement of the students. So this method is called learning to learn which enables the student to face the challenges of the world. Learning is initiated with a posed problem. We have experienced in the corporate readiness lab at the outset students find it very difficult to start the project. And the students who start the project they find it very difficult to continue the project. And the students who find it difficult to continue the project, most of them fail to achieve the objective of the project. So let us all understand what is the objective of learning through project. It is at this moment it is very relevant to quote Balayana who says project teach students to be mastery oriented, not ability oriented. They teach students to be learning oriented rather than performance oriented, they teach students to be task involved rather than ego involved. Here again, I would like to show you a small clip which is learning oriented. When a deadline is given, when there is a problem, the student is bound to learn. So you might be thinking that what shit am I talking about, the water is flowing, so it must be going somewhere. This is the group that had not completed the project. And when I asked them to repeat, the, repeat it in the fourth semester, in one day they went and interacted with the stakeholders and came up with a presentation. So that we can use it and extract the water later. Good afternoon to all of you. 
I am here to speak about the water harvesting structures that are present here, uh, especially rainwater harvesting structures present in our city. And what are the problems that they have? First of all, we will concentrate on this point. So, as you can see here, this point is being constructed here to. They try to so identify the problems. From the the project is, title was yes. Water Harvesting now at Centurion water University. Uh, water comes down from the hills and gets stored in this area. Okay. So, the rainwater, where I am talking about the participation of all stakeholders, students, teachers, senior management team, and other external stakeholders. I would also like to quote John Dewey, who is considered to be the father of project-based approach. He says, project doesn't present topics as formulations to be memorized, but bring conditions where people try resourcefulness, ability to take right decisions, and activity. So these are the expressions of inclusion that I see at the university. Now there is a tremendous change, a major level change in the attitude of the students regarding the assessments and grades. The majority say that approach is more important than the outcome. Students say, now you see there is a similarity in the responses. Students say initiation and thought processes are important. Approach is organization communication. Approach will decide the outcome. Approach is in our hands, not the outcome. Despite failure, one gains useful experiences. Here I'm talking about the inclusion of meaningful learning experiences. When I mentioned it is learning oriented. Good way to gain communication skills and confidence. With project think approach, we get new things to learn and do new things. So the emphasis is also given on doing, learning by doing. Now let's look at the feedback given by the faculty members. Indeed, the project approach facilitates the desired outcome. Here I would like to mention that at the beginning, the faculty members were resistant to this change. People had serious doubts on the efficiency of the teachers in guiding the technical projects. And there was a lot of noise, confusion, but after the exposure visits to various companies, after a series of workshops, presentations, brainstorming sessions, we came up with this idea. And some of them say, feel good to find an opportunity to be a part of the teaching and learning process. Here again, I would like to come up with a Chinese proverb, Involve me, I understand. So involvement is very important in the learning process. This is a good exercise for making the students understand and apply knowledge. Good and enjoyable experience while guiding the project here. Not only the students, the faculty members are equally excited and inquisitive about this learning process. Project outcomes must be used for a change and bringing about new ideas which we, where we have uh, taken a step. We, at the end, we prepare a report and send it or submit it to the management for the necessary changes in the curriculum. So every project must be analyzed with a real-time situation. Now look at the student voice and choice. They adopt a variety of expressive outlets to demonstrate their learning, which I have already discussed. So they come up with various types of presentations like mind mappings, movies, video presentations. They use their tablets to collect the data. They prepare a lot of questions and they gather data. They use the social networking sites. They use the ERP module to take the opinion uh, poll of the feedback from the faculty. They go for focused group discussions, design a Facebook pages, and the pages of the department. So these are the expressions of inclusion that I see at the university. Now, I expect a question which I have already mentioned. How can we improve the ratio of performers in English and communication classes? So the answer is only one. Constant interaction through involvement 
through engagement or what we call talking cure is the solution to this problem. And another thing that I would like to say is we can make it more meaningful if we apply the revised Bloom's learning taxonomy. When we prepare the questions, we ask the questions when we probe. I would like to show that many of you are aware of it. There are six categories. In this age of information explosion, can a student remember the information, retain the information that is very important? Does the student have the ability to explain ideas or concepts? Whether a student can summarize a thing, can explain a thing? Can the students interpret the information or use the information in a new way? Can the student probe to differentiate between the different parts? Can the student justify a stand or can a student take a decision when necessary? Can the student create a new product or a new idea or present a point of view? So this is all about my perspective. And I feel that these are the expressions of inclusion that I see at Centurion University.